changes dramatically. It's blowing a gale and our trip to the Great Wall today is off. So I think a little shopping and a few sights to take in is the best we're going to do. One thing they say about Beijing is that what you see today will be completely different tomorrow. The city is in a constant state of flux. You should know too that foreign tourists are not permitted to drive in China and international driving licenses are not recognized. Oh, and in the smaller towns and villages, you might have to produce your marriage certificate to check into a hotel. If you're a couple, that is. Like most countries worldwide, there are bargains to be found in Beijing. Pearls provide fantastic value for money. And there's Shandong silk and brocade, tailor-made clothing. If you have the time, Kashmir from Inner Mongolia, the list is endless. It's still blowing a huli outside, and the spring temperature, as it says in the guidebook, is a bit cool, to say the least. Can we just it's been blowing force 12, at least. It's quite incredible how quickly the weather changes here. Anyway, we're doing a little bit of shopping, and we're going, instead of the Great Wall, we're gonna go and have a look at the World Park. Our driver couldn't speak any English when he didn't want to go where I wanted to go, if you know what I mean. It seemed to me his game is to take us on yet another shopping spree and hopefully pick up some more commission from yet another tourist trap. I do love a shop full of knickknacks. Just look at this work. It's really, really intricate. These little jars here, if you open the top, they're painted from the inside. Absolutely incredible. About £4.80. This is actually the oldest tourist shop in Beijing. It was only after 1949 that the locals were allowed in. Well, back on the road at last. No, don't panic. We haven't moved on to Paris. We're still in Beijing. Now then, where was I? Oh yes, the World Park. So there you go, the great Bamsba Temple of Egypt. You'd think they would have fixed that broken head, wouldn't you? And of course, no World Park would be complete without pyramids and camels. I'm thinking, God, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and try that again. Try that again. I'm not going near it. Come on, don't be a chicken. <laughs> Gudley toys. That's what it's all about. You've only got to look at her face, haven't you? <laughs> you manji mutt. <laughs> Bye. Stunned by China's version of Disneyland, the crew take a nap and we're off on one of our driver's little diversions. I'm not, I'm not hungry. Me, <laughs> see I'm really not hungry. <laughs> what are you eating? What is that? <laughs> hey? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's been suggested that we check out how the typical Beijing citizen lives. Of course, it's a setup. I mean, you don't just walk into some chap's home for a quick look around. Well, not unless you're thinking of buying it. And that's probably even illegal here. Oh, look, one day I'm going to have to teach Ben how to bow without tilting the camera. He follows me everywhere. He how? Ben, I feel you have a filter change coming on. Yeah, I'll change the. Hello, 
Whilst Larry got the family lowdown, I wonder what Mr. Hoare did for a living. Was this really just an elaborate setup? Why am I being over cynical? Oh, he's an expert of antique. Of antiques? Oh, wow. Yeah. So does, does he sell antiques or repair antiques? Or? So, is the kitchen an extension? I didn't have the heart to tell him how antique dealers live in the UK. You know, Georgian mansion, BMW, horses in the paddock, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Hello, okay, me, 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 one dollar. One dollar. Uh, he still wants me to buy one of these. One dollar. Hello. That's a okay. Man. One dollar. At the top end of the accommodation market, you can find yourself pretty comfy in Beijing. And considering the number of stars, the prices aren't overly plastic melting. Accommodation is usually priced in dollars, and you can spend them on most of the big internationally named products if that's your inclination. Well, it's another day and we're up bright and early and just look at this weather. Back to t-shirts, fantastic. Later, the Great Wall of China, but first, the Lama Temple. The temple was once the official residence of Count Yin Zhen. He became emperor in 1723 and moved to the Forbidden City. With the traditional changes this imposed on the buildings, they became a temple thereafter. We were just getting into the filming here when a rather large part-time sumo wrestler told us we had to stop despite our permissions. So from here, we carry on in secret. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. In 1949, the Lama Temple was declared a historical relic, actually surviving the Cultural Revolution. It was hailed a symbol of religious freedom, national unity, and stability in China by drawing the Tibetan and Mongolian religious traditions into those of China. Well, that's the Lama Temple, then. Well, I'm all templed out, but these knick-knack stores mark the part of the programme I've been waiting for since we arrived. Oh, yes, it is the Great Wall of China. I'm so excited. I can't believe we're here at last. The sun is out, the sky is blue. <laughs> There's enough blue up there to knit a sailor's suit. <laughs> Desert storms, they've all gone. Just walk a bit faster, will you? Oh, I'm sorry. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> we are talking wall to wall here. Taking in the branches that shoot off the main wall, the total length is some six and a half thousand kilometers. And not surprisingly, considering that it's about one-sixth of the distance around the equator, it was started about 3,000 years ago. As you can see, the northwestern face of the wall is built substantially higher to provide as much protection as possible from those invaders on the other side. The wall snakes over the mountains north of Beijing. It's the longest man-made wall in the world, and you can reckon the workforce it took to build it in millions. There were bits of defensive walls built by warring warlords 3,000 years ago. But in 221 BC, the Prince of Qin annexed six other states and called himself the first emperor of China. He joined the northern walls together to protect his territories. It was an incredible achievement. There was no sloppy workmanship here. The workers were told of a test. An arrow would be fired into the wall, and if it stuck, that entire section of the wall had to be taken down and rebuilt. If the arrow bounced off, then that section of the wall could stay. A million labourers, negligent civil servants, dissidents, criminals, and 300,000 troops commanded by General Ming Tian built the wall for Emperor Qin.
Much of the Great Wall standing today was built during the Ming Dynasty some 300 to 600 years ago. How does 60 million cubic meters of stone and 100 years grab you? That's how much and how long the Ming contribution took. Oddly enough, the wall worked much better as an elevated highway than it did as a defensive system. Pretty much the way it is today. It's incredible, there are people walking this wall as far as the eye can see. Well, with just another 2,800 miles to go, I'd better get on with it. That's your lot. Till the next time, goodbye. <laughs>